Sherlock Holmes and the Invisible Thing um, is about a murder that is witnessed uh, and everything is seen apart from the murderer, um, hence the title. And uh, so uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are, are called in to investigate. Um, and there's, a, there's uh, a great deal of subtext because um, the, uh, the person who has supposedly witnessed the murder, Lucy Grendel, is an old, I suppose you'd call it adversary, of Sherlock Holmes, they have uh, encountered each other before, so there is a bit of uh, there is history there. Um, and the man previously tasked with leading the investigation, Inspector Peacock, the local uh, the local plod, um, is not very competent at all. Um, so this is all combined to uh, to make it, as as Sherlock says, quite a baffling case. Um, and uh, yes, so we are, we are on the trail of an invisible thing. What is quite different uh, about this uh, adaptation of Sherlock Holmes is that your character, uh, Sherlock, uh, is usually played as a very misogynistic character. Uh, in this play, he actually shows some emotion. He's more human. Yes, I think that's, uh, that's something Greg wanted to, to bring across. And I mean, we live in more enlightened times now, so perhaps you could call it uh, Sherlock Holmes more for, the, more for the 21st century, if you like. Um, <coughs> But uh, I, always, I always think that if you're, if you're playing a character, you need to, um, you need to invest them with some humanity. Um, whoever they may be and whatever their outlook may be on life, they are still essentially human. So I think that makes it, hopefully, uh, more relatable. You care about her? No more than for any other vulnerable woman. You've obviously played cards with her. You must like her company. There must be something about her that pleases you. There is no evidence of that. Perhaps it's just a matter of je ne sais quoi, it's French. I am acquainted with the expression. Well, what does it mean? I don't know what. Yes, yes, that is the literal translation, but there's also an invisible meaning. I am aware that some people use it to explain the unexplainable. Not some people, Holmes. The French. In my world, there will always be an explanation for the unexplainable. There is no place for je ne sais quoi. The French are lazy. They simply can't be bothered to find the answer. <laughs> je ne sais quoi. Look for the answer. It's always there. What if it's not? What if it's just an invisible thing? This particular scene, I actually really enjoy this um, scene. I think you get to see Watson having a little bit of one-upmanship with Sherlock. You know, normally Sherlock is, he's, he's kind of the, the daddy, as it were. But this is nice because it is Watson actually, and it shows their relationship as well. It shows Watson knows how to kind of push a few buttons, but not go too far. Richard, you play Dr. Watson and you have struck a very good balance between the clumsy buffoon and the professional uh, doctor. What's your character been like to play? Um, thank you, <laughs> at first. Um, so, yeah, I play Dr. Watson um, and... It's really, it's, it is, it, it's difficult with the comedy stuff because you don't want to push it too hard um, because obviously he's a doctor um, and there has to be that relationship with Sherlock Holmes otherwise why would Sherlock Holmes have this kind of bumbling buffoon hanging around? Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, I think Greg Freeman, the writer, has done a fantastic job because it's kind of, us as actors, you, sometimes you have to do a lot more work but it's all there, it's written for us you know, you just kind of can, everything's in the words, you don't have to try and imagine too much. Um, and they are exceptionally famous characters as well, so you're kind of, there is kind of a slight blueprint that goes down throughout the years. Um, but also it's trying to bring something new to it. Um, and yeah, and not, you know, kind of doing something that might have been seen before, which is what we're kind of trying to do.